So prefab means like the, uh, like it said, it's prefabricated object. So I'm going to make a prefab folder. Prefabs. How you, how, how you generate the, the, the prefabs is just easy. Well, I will just simply create um, another cube, which is, I'll change the name to a brick. Set, change the scale like. Uh, if you want to zoom into your object, for example, well, you can just double click, double click from the hierarchy, or you just click, just select every, select whatever you want and press. Oops. Press F. Yeah. And uh, let's see. This is like brick-ish shape, right? So we want to use this as a prefab. So how you do it is just it's, it's, it's simply drag and drop to the uh, project channel, and it's gen it generated prefabs. So once you generated prefabs, you don't need this anymore. So inside of the world script, we're going to attach this brick. So once I click it, it generated bricks over here. So how you generate the multiple multiple worlds? Right? So um, there is a for loop function inside of the uh, for loop function. So we're going to use the for loop. And I call zero. So inside of this this for loop, uh, it's going to do the same thing. Like it's going to do the same thing until I reach to the ten. So if I bring it to inside of here, but yeah, it's it, it's not, it's not going to happen anyway because because I didn't give I didn't I didn't give any I related function over here. So for example, in here, I think I I can put I over here. So if I generate over here, yeah, it generated 10 times of breaks, but I mean, somehow it, they are too close. So yeah, so I, I said break was three, right? So then maybe 3.2F, 1F, which is like, more British. So when you generate, yeah. Well, ah, and then the one thing uh, that I didn't tell you is like the game view. I think uh, your basic basic setup is game view is over here. So when you play it, even though you are in the scene, I think it automatically goes to the game view. Well, in that case, it's hard to see the, uh, the your view. So how you do it is like if if you like this view for now, just select the main camera and press Control Shift F, and then the, the camera view is changed, like same as your scene view. So now you can see the game view is the same as scene view. Uh, well, just in case, I'll save the scene. In the scene. Recall. Yeah. So, and then it's just, and then the uh, how you want to make the uh, like how can you say that uh, the wall shape is I mean same as it's exactly same idea. So we can do the a look for. Day and bring them into the for loop and type J one point F. Yeah. Save one point one F. This is what I want to.
embed is going to yeah generate kind of brick wall ish but i mean usually in the brick wall it like i can say that uh yeah it's not like this kind of grid shape you know so let's make the move so if So here is this 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 mark is this mark is like when you divide j by two and then that is the rest. So for example, if if j is a three and three three divided by two is one and then there is a less of them is one, so it's going to be one. And then four, if j is four, it's going to be four divided by two is zero and then there is nothing less, so it's zero. You know what I'm saying? So this is like, you, you can find every even numbers. So in this case, um, well, I'm going to create the uh, private value. Oops. Private plot cross. So every even number cross is 0.65F, which is half of this number, so, and then I plus cross. So every even number, the, ah, in here, also I do, otherwise, like it's going to be, once it reaches to two, cross is always going to remain 1.65F. So we have to put the else function as well. So in this case, which is, Odd number cross equal zero. To do this, yeah, here you can see the kind of brick wall ish. Like you can give some rotation as well. Right. So I didn't use the rotation before, but for now, I think you can use a new, sorry, new object point. Transform means like the uh, usually the um, it calls the sorry it calls the object itself so transform this so it transform and this is function rotate to do this and the compiling and then when you play it. Yeah, it rot I mean, yeah, it's going to rotate like when it goes to the top. And then you can give some, you can play with some rigid function, which is like when you go to prefab, open prefab, inside of here, this is how you, how you change the prefab. Prefab is like, ah, okay, you can understand there's like a blocks in, in, in Rhino. Or, uh, yeah, so inside of here, you can add component of rigid body. Let's try. So, yeah, I use when you take the, I mean, just let's use the, uh, the default function. So, to do this, once you generate. It's oh, it, that's what and that's because of we don't have any like ground for now. So let's create the pretty object, the plane. Let's set to the zero and let's let's keep them size like ten by ten or maybe twenty. Yeah. Uh, when you generate, yeah, it falls down because we give them like the rigid body function with the gravity. Yeah. Uh, well, if you want to see it a bit more clearly, I'll change this. Like, uh, maybe I can keep this one, but so yeah like this but 
what I think if you turn off the gravity, it's going to be a bit fun. So I just turned off the gravity inside of free cup. And it's going to be floating all the way around because there is no gravity. Well, I mean, if you want to make it a bit more complicated, you can just change the if values and you can add more values to. So X can be also change the location. I mean, K, I mean, Z also can be the locations. But however, for now, I'll just keep this way. Yeah, I don't want to use the rigid body for now, so I'll just remove the component. So yeah, like it generated like this kind of size. And of course, you also can control all the numbers outside of the Unity, so you can create public. Uh, columns, public float, columns. Well, not float. It should be int, right? So it exists like 10.5 columns. In here, we can use columns, we can use Right. Those. 